139, verse 13 to 14. For you, for my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 14. Good afternoon, MCF family. It's another blessed Sunday afternoon to everyone. Indeed, God is so faithful. God is so good. So we will continue to praise Him, His name in songs and glorify Him with thanksgiving because God is so kind and He's so merciful and gracious to each one of us. Amen? So, let us sing together because He is our forever, forever Redeemer. rescued my soul His blood covered my sin I believe I believe My shame is taken away My pain is sealed in His name I believe I believe I raise the banner Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause my Lord has conquered the grave My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives I know He rescued my soul his blood covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is sealed in His name. I believe. I believe. I raise the banner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, 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 my Redeemer burdens I rise with you I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come my redeemer lives my redeemer lives my redeemer lives my redeemer They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. My Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fear is gone Because I know And love is worth believing 
changes because he lives. How sweet the hope a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings, but greater still. The calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know how He holds the future, and love is worth the living just because He lives. And then one day. Cross the river, I fight less final war with pain. And the next day gives way to victory. I see the lights of glory. And I know He lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I. And love is worth the living just because he lives. Ikaw na ang pag-asa ko, tanging ikaw ang buhay ko isi. Kahit ako'y nangamba, basta't ikaw ay kasama, panatang na. Kahit kailan, di ka nagkulang, biyaya mo sa aking laging naan, pag-ibig mo. Kaya't ika'y sasambahin, paligid man ay magdalihisin. Kahit may suliranin man, ang lagi kong aawitan, ikaw lamang. Kahit kailan, Laging laan, pag-ibig mo, sakit walang hanggan, inibig mo ako noon pa man. Hi, good afternoon everyone. I hope and pray that you are all safe and secure in your respective homes. I thank the Lord for the privilege to join you online on this very special day to honor our mothers. You know, I lost my mom a few years back, so I won't have the opportunity to thank her today. 
But do you realize that if not for my mom, you won't have a preacher here this afternoon? You know, but it's, that's okay. Because if you didn't have a mom too, then there won't be anyone to view this online anyway. So we're all grateful for our moms. I was surfing the internet looking for pictures I can use for Mother's Day and I came across these this touching pictures of mother and child bonding in the animal world. And so there you have the mother and her young. Of course, nothing compared to the way a human mother would care for her children. Right there. That's a very caring mother, isn't it? No, seriously, I have seen a program in the National Geographic where the mother lioness would be willing to abandon her cub if her own life is at stake. I think it's the survival instinct that kicks in and so self-preservation becomes more important than saving their young. Now, this is where human mothers would be different. I remember the touching true story that happened on August 16, 1987. Northwest Airlines Flight 225 crashed just after taking off from the Detroit airport, killing 155 people. The passenger list registered that there were 156 people on board. 155 have been accounted dead. One passenger is missing. Rescuers found a four-year-old girl among the wreckage. News accounts say when rescuers found her, they did not believe she had been on that plane. Investigators first assumed that the girl had been a passenger in one of the cars on the highway onto which the airliner crossed. But when the passenger register for the flight was checked, there was indeed a four-year-old girl named Cecilia from Arizona who was on that plane together with her mom. How did she survive the crash? Friends, it's easy to imagine that Cecilia survived because even as the plane was falling, Cecilia's mother, Paula, wrapped her arms and uh, around, the, uh, around the body of Cecilia, would not let her go. She effectively used her own body as a shield and as a cushion to protect the frail body of her four-year-old daughter. Nothing could separate the child from her mother's love, neither tragedy nor disaster, neither height nor depth nor the fall, nor the flames that followed neither life nor death. That's the power of a mother's love. Well, today, we celebrate Mother's Day. Have you thought of a way to honor your mother this year? You know, there was this one little boy. He was thinking of a gift to give his mom, and so he asked his father, Dad, I wonder what mother would like for Mother's Day. The father answered, Well, son, you could promise to keep your room clean and orderly. You could go to bed as soon as she tells you. You could brush your teeth after eating and you could quit fighting with your sister. The boy looked at his dad and said, Dad, give me something practical. Well, for our message this afternoon, I thought of something practical that would make all our mothers happy. I've entitled this study this afternoon, How to Honor Your Mother. We have just one verse to meditate and that's found in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Let's read this. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Let's commit this time in prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that your spirit will move in our midst, remove any hindrance now, any disturbance, any tiredness in our bodies, any doubt, any fear. And Lord, we pray, cover us with your precious blood so that each one of us will complete this study, touching our lives and changing it in the process. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friends, there was once a, an evangelist who was the Billy Graham of his day. His name is Dwight L. Moody. You know, Dwight L. Moody, after a lifetime of observation of the world, after a lifetime of service to the Lord, and after a lifetime of study of God's Word, made an astounding statement. Listen to this statement. He said, I have lived over 60 years, and I have learned one thing, if I have learned nothing else. No man or woman who dishonors his father or mother ever prospers. Now think about that for a moment. Remember, this is not just anybody saying this. This is one of the greatest Christian leaders who ever lived. He says this statement, not thoughtlessly, 
He says that there's something he has learned. This is the sum total, the observation of a lifetime. And he said, I have lived over 60 years and I have learned one thing. If I have learned nothing else, no man or woman who dishonors his father or mother ever prospers. I know some of you might be thinking right now, really, is that true? I'm sure there must be people out there who dishonor their parents who are more prosperous than their parents. But you see, the problem with that thought is that you're defining prosperity only in terms of material wealth. And then it's also possible that there are those who dishonor their parents who prospered because they repented along the way. But friends, whether that statement is true or not, the Word of God commands us to honor your father and mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Remember the first, first four commandments deal with man's vertical relationship with God. The last six commandments are about man's horizontal relationship with his fellow man. Now it's interesting and instructive to recognize that out of the six horizontal relationships, the first commandment about relating to others has to do with people, has to do with our father and our mother, the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. You see, the first others we run into are our mom and dad. We need to learn to get along with our mom and with our dad. If you can get along with your mom and dad, you're going to have problems getting along with anybody else in society. Because friends, the family is the basic structure of human civilization. It all begins right there. So God in His infinite wisdom begins by saying, Honor your father and your mother. You see, our parents are the first people we meet. Now, if we cannot learn to love and respect our parents, then it's obvious we cannot learn to love and respect anyone else. What God is saying is this, the religion that doesn't begin at home simply does not begin. Because what happens at home is the basis of everything else. If the home decays, the church decays. If our church decays, then the society the case. And so we begin here. God tells us that the basis of our relationship to everybody else and everything else on planet earth after we get right with God is in our home where we learn to honor our father and our mother. That means friends what we do on Mother's Day is not merely something sentimental. It is biblical. It, as a matter of fact it is a command. It's not a suggestion. There's no such thing as the ten suggestions we have the Ten Commandments. And the fifth command is we are to honor our father and our mother. Mother's Day is just a token of that honor. We are to honor our mothers 365 days a year. Now, it's interesting to note that the word honor right there in the original language, it literally means to add weight to. Now, I know no, no mother wants, to, wants weight to be added to them. So let's, let's explain this a little bit more. To honor in the original word, it means to think of them with seriousness. It means to take our parents seriously, to revere them, and to respect them. Now, there are at least three ways that each one of us can honor our mothers. Number one is you can honor your mother through the life that you live. You see, there are only two ways to go in life. You can either honor your parents or dishonor your parents by the way you live. The life of obedience is the way to live that honors our parents. When we are children, you know, we are to obey our parents. And even when we're old, we are to learn to take their advice. Now, we obey them not just because it's Mother's Day, but Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Do you want to please God? You cannot please God by displeasing your parents. Obey your parents in all things. You see, there's a blessing in obedience. And not only is there a blessing in obedience, friends, what is dangerous is that there is great danger in disobedience. I was astounded as I studied the Bible about this matter of obeying our parents. When we disobey our parents, God gives us a catalog of sins, you know, in the, in, in the book of Romans. The most terrible, the most horrible, hurtful sins that you can think of. And right in the list, in this catalog of sins that mentions, the Apostle Paul mentioned disobedience to parents. Here in Romans chapter 1, 
28 to 30, it says, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of, of doing evil. And then look at this friends. They disobey their parents. Wow. Did you see that? The heinous crimes that are listed here includes disobeying our parents. It's that serious to God. It's not only that. Look at the punishment attached to it. If Paul continues in verses 31 and 32, here's what he said. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. You see, God says, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things, including disobeying the parents, they deserve death. You see, God says in the Old Testament that if you were disobedient to your parents, now that's not an ordinary disobedience, but that's a belligerent, a willful, arrogant, rebellious son and daughter to the point that you curse your parents. And that's why it says there in, in Leviticus 20 verse 9, anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death because they have cursed their father or mother, their blood will be on their own head. The punishment is death. Now that's how God felt about the seal of disobeying our parents. Of course today, he does not enact this death penalty because we're living under a different dispensation. What I'm saying is this, obedience brings tremendous blessing. There is blessing with obedience. But friends, the flip side to this is that disobedience is a terrible, horrible sin before God. I want to read another scripture to show you that when God wants to describe perilous times, when God wants to describe an age or a society that is coming apart, God says that disobedience to parents is one of the marks of the last days of our generation. Here in 2 Timothy 3, 2-5 in the Living Bible, it says, I want you to know this to Timothy, that in the last days, it's going to be very difficult to be a Christian. People will love only themselves and their money. And then it continues by saying, they will be proud and boastful, sneering at God. And then look at this. Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. And then he said, they will be hard-headed and never give in to others. They will be constant liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immorality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will betray their friends. They will be hot-headed, puffed up with pride, and prefer good times to worshiping God. And then the Apostle Paul ended it with these words. They will go to church. Yes, that means these people he's describing here, these are people who are Christians. They go to church, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by people like that. Now, in the, this horrible catalog of sins found during the last days, again, God mentions disobedience to parents. I want to tell you, dear friends, that disobedience to your parents is going to invite the judgment of God upon your life. Let me give you another scripture found here in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Now that's taken from Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 so that you'll have long life. Well, do you want to shorten your life? Friends, if you want to shorten your life, just disobey your parents. Perhaps you, put, you ought to put a sign over the door of your child's bedroom and it says something like this, warning disobedience to your parents may be harmful to your health. That's what God say, That's what God is saying. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. 
this is a which is the first commandment with a promise now you'll say well what if my parents are not right what if my parents tell me to do something wrong well friends you, you don't have to worry about that because the Bible clearly says here in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 children obey your parents in the Lord obviously if your parents tell you to do something contrary to the word of God then you ought not to do it even if the prime minister tells you to do something that is in direct violation of the word of God then you ought not to do it however that's not the problem that children have today isn't it the problem is with kids who are hard headed they want it their own way they want to eat only what they want to eat they want to sleep when they want to sleep and they want to live their lives however they want to live it they think they know better than their parents they think they they don't need to obey because they think they're they are smarter than their parents now friends even if we agree for a moment that your parents may not be as smart as you you know maybe you are more technologically advanced than your parents probably you even have more degrees that doesn't uh, that doesn't have anything to do with it suppose for example we're going as a family you know I have two kids my daughter Rejoice and my son Josiah let's say as a family we're planning a trip to go to Montreal we're going to drive to Montreal from Toronto about five hours let's suppose that my young adult kids cannot drive with me and my wife in the morning but we'll have to drive in a separate car a few hours later. So we're already halfway on our way to Montreal and my son and daughter just left our home while we're driving, you know, they'll try to catch up with us. We call them and then when we reach Kingston, we would tell them, you need to avoid this particular road because there is construction going on. Try to avoid the highway, go to a sideway, you know. Then after an hour or two, we call them again and tell them, you know, there's a great rest restaurant that you'll be passing where they have a great meal. Now, friends, that doesn't mean we're smarter than our kids. It just means they've been, we've been a little farther than the road is in the tribe. We've seen the places where they're going. And because we love them, we warn them about some things and we inform them about great places they should not miss. It has nothing to do with being smart. We've, we've just been a, a, a little farther than the road. You see, your parents have seen things. They have experienced things you haven't experienced yet. They know the detours. They know the beauties. All sorts of things they want you to know about. It would be foolish for you not to listen to your parents. And that's how you can honor them. Now, you might think you are smarter than them. But I tell you, you can't be wiser than them. Because wisdom comes with experience and they've experienced life more than you have and so here's what I have to say to all our young people you better think twice before you disobey your parents they are seeking God's best for you they're praying for you they love you more than anyone else in this world and so God in his wisdom gave us parents and it is our duty to honor them and we honor them by the life that we live Living a life of obedience is one of the ways you can honor your mother, but also another way is by living an honorable life. Here in Proverbs 23 verse 22, it says, Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. So here in verse 23, 24, the father of a righteous child has great joy, a man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. And in verse 25, May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. There are two ways you can live your life. You can live your life that brings joy to your mother. Or you can live your life that brings sorrow and shame. Simply put, if I have an honorable life, then that honors my parents. Now, secondly, another way to honor our mother is not only through the life that we live, we also honor our mother through the load that you lift. The load that you lift. You see, we must help our parents. Now, we agree that children are to be taught honesty. We need to teach them industry and integrity in the home. You see, children, you sin against your parents if you don't help them in the home. And parents, 
you sin against your children if you do not teach them to help you at home. You know, it's sad, but for some kids today, their mother has to nag them to do the dishes. Their mother has to beg them to clean up their room or scold them about these things. You know, there are some teenagers out there, if you look and enter their bedroom, it could win the city dump look-alike contest. You know, it seems like the only time you'll ever clean it up is when you have visitors coming. You know, that dishonors your parents. Children must be taught industry in the home. So when you are young, you are to help your parents. And when they are old, you are to care for them. Now, there's a serious problem in our society today, and that is the care of the old and the elderly. You know, the more pagan a society gets, the less that society cares for the aged. And in some pagan societies, when people get old, they just remove them out of the society. Their elders are kicked out of the village. They wander in the jungles until they die. You know, the Bible teaches that we cannot use our religion. We cannot use our church involvement as an excuse for not taking care of our parents. Listen to what Jesus Christ told the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15, verses 3 to 9 here. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. God says that any man, any woman, any boy or any girl in this church, in your church, worshiping God who doesn't take care of their parents is a hypocrite. God says they worship me in vain. What God is saying is you're wasting your time going to church. You're wasting your time tuning in. You say, well, I don't have time for my parents. You see, I'm a, I, I'm, a, I'm a leader here in church. You know, that, friends, that doesn't impress God, not at all. You might say, well, my parents are a bother. You know, I have to carry them around. I have to change their clothes. You know, it stinks. I have to feed them. Well, didn't your mothers do the same for us? Didn't they change us? They bathed us? They, and yet we spit on them. Did you know that the Bible teaches that if you don't care, take care of your parents, we are worse than an infidel. In fact, we don't even make it up as an unbeliever. Let me give you the passage. It's found here in 1 Timothy 5.4. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, they should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. Did you see that? To put the religion into practice. That means, friends, Paul is saying here, don't practice your religion out there in the community. Don't come to church to practice your religion. Don't go out there in society to practice your religion. Don't go anywhere else. The place to practice your religion is inside the home. And then, here's the Apostle Paul concluding his admonition in verse 8. He said, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Is even considered, you know, worse than an infidel if he doesn't take care of his own. Now let me mention the last way that you and I can honor our parents. You and I can honor our parents through the life that we live, through the love that we live, and then lastly, through the love that we lavish. Honor your mother through the love that you lavish. Now the word lavish, of course, is a very descriptive word. We are to love them with a lavish love because their life blood flows in us. Their very life is in us. They would give their lives for us. I believe that the closest thing on this earth to the love of God is the love of parents for their children. I believe that it's the closest, the greatest illustration of the love of God. And so, we are to return that love. And know, brothers and sisters, listen. If your parents are still living, 
then let me encourage you to write that letter now. Pay that visit now. Send that gift now. Do that chore now or give that kiss of affection now. And also, forgive your parents now for whatever it is that they have done or did not do. You know, there's, there are 50-year-old kids out there who need to forgive their parents. Do you know any parent who's perfect? Nobody's perfect. Only perfect children can demand perfect parents. Brothers and sisters, I want to rem remind you of these three ways that we can honor our parents. We can honor them through the life that we live, the love that we live, and the love that we lavish. Show that love and do it now. Dead noses smells no roses, somebody said. If your parents are still alive, then show them that love and honor. That's the way on this wonderful Mother's Day that you're going to be able to honor your father and your mother. Those are the three ways, the life that you live, the love that you live, and the love that you lavish. Let me just close with this article. The title of the article is The Meanest Mother. Let me read this for you in closing. The meanest mother. I had the meanest mother in the whole world. While other kids ate candy for breakfast, I had to have cereal, eggs, or toast. When others had Cokes and candy for lunch, I had to eat a sandwich. As you can guess, my supper was different from the other kids also. But at least I wasn't alone in my sufferings. My sister and two brothers had the same mean mother as I did. My mother insisted upon knowing where we were at all times. You'd think we were on a chewing gum. She had to know who our friends were and where we are going. She insisted if we said we'd be gone an hour, that we'd be gone an hour or less, not one hour or and one minute. I am nearly ashamed to admit it, but she actually struck us. Not once, but each time that we had a mind of our own, and did as we pleased. That poor belt was used more on our seats than it was to hold up daddy's pants. Can you imagine someone actually hitting a child just because he disobeyed? Now you can imagine to see how mean she really was. We had to wear clean clothes and take a bath. The other kids always wore their clothes for days. We reached the height of insults because she made our clothes herself just to save money. Oh, why? Why, oh, why did we have to have a mother who made us feel different from our friends? The worst is yet to come. We had to be in bed by nine each night and up at eight the next morning. We couldn't sleep till noon like our friends. So while they slept, my mother actually had the nerve to break the child labor law. She made us work. We had to wash dishes, make beds, learn to cook, and all sorts of cruel things. I believe that she lay awake at night thinking of mean things to do to us. She always insisted upon us telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, even if it killed us, and it nearly did. By the time we were teenagers, she was much wiser, and our life became even more unbearable. She embarrassed us to no end by making our dates and friends to come to the door to get us. None of this tooting the horn of a car for us to come running. If I spent the night with a girlfriend, can you imagine she checked on me to see if I was really there? I never had a chance to elope to Mexico, that is, if I had a boyfriend to elope with. I forgot to mention that while my friends were dating at the mature ages of 12 and 13, my old-fashioned mother refused to let me date until the ages of 15 or 16. 15 that is, if you dated only to go to a school function. And that was maybe twice a year. Through the years, things didn't improve a bit. We could not lie in bed sick like our friends did and miss school if our friends had a to, to ache, a hand nail, or a serious ailment, they could st stay home from school. Our marks in school had to be up to par. Our friends' report cards had beautiful colors on them, black for passing, red for failing. My mother, being as different as she was, would settle for nothing less than ugly black marks. As the years rolled by, first one and then the other of us were put to shame. 
we were graduated from high school with our mother behind us talking, hitting, and demanding respect. None of us was allowed the pleasure of being a dropout. My mother was a complete failure as a mother. Out of four children, a couple of us attained some higher education. None of us have ever been arrested, divorced, or has been beat or has beaten his name. Each of my brothers served his time in the service of this country. And whom do we have to blame for the terrible way we turned out? You're right, our mean mother. Look at the things we missed. We never got to march in a protest parade, nor take part in a riot, burn drop cards, nor a million and one other things that our friends did. She forced us to grow up into God-fearing, educated, honest adults. Using this as a background, I am trying to raise my three children. I stand a little taller and I am filled with pride when my children call me mean. Because you see, I thank God. He gave me the meanest mother in the whole world. Friends, are there mean mothers out there? We need mothers who mean business for God. Now, how can we honor our mothers? Listen, friends, through the life that you live, through the load that you live, and through the love that you love is. So be good to yourself and honor your father and your mother so that it may be well with you. Let's bow our heads, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for these reminders. And Lord, we pray that these, these things will continue to ring in the minds of our children, that they will indeed honor their fathers and their mothers so that they will have long life here on earth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you very much. Keep safe and God bless everyone.
May 10th announcement to all moms happy mother's day we celebrate your special presence in our lives we thank you for all the sacrifices hard work love and care you are special proverbs 31 verse 28 to 31 her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Once again, Happy Mother's Day. We invite everyone to join us on our Zoom Bible study every Wednesday, Bible study at 8.30 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for men's prayer meeting 9.30 p.m. Friday, Acts Fellowship for the Youth at 8 p.m. And Saturday for women's Bible study at 5.30 p.m. Today, we also celebrate um, the birthday of Pastor Adele. Pastor Adele, thank you for your leadership, your life, and your ministry. May you be exceedingly be blessed beyond your expectation, and may the Lord God continue to shower His grace upon you. Other birthday celebrants for the month of May are May 20th, Sister Jonalyn, May 23rd, Brother Georgian, May 26th, Sister Danita, and May 29th, Brother Gomer. Tithes and Offering 2 Chronicles 31st, verse 12 God's people faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. MCF members who are capable and willing to give we encourage to direct your tithes and offering to Sister Lovella through e-transfer. Prayer request, Jeremiah 29 verse 12, Then you will call on me and I will listen to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You heard our petition. You answered our plea for our brother Bong. By your grace and your mercy, he is healed. May your name be glorified and be praised. 
If anyone is in need of prayer also or any assistance, you may call or message the MCF leadership. Thank you and have a good day. Once again, church, that concludes our Sunday online worship service. And as always, we would like to thank the people who help us make this service possible. Uh, thank you, Sister Lira, for leading us on the praise and worship songs. And uh, also, we'd like to thank Gabriela and Faith for reading us the psalm scripture for today. I'd like to uh, give thanks also to Sister Trish for that special response song. And Sister Bang for the announcement, uh, for preparing the announcement for us for today. We'd like to uh, say a special thank you too to uh, Sister Gurley for the uh, the PowerPoint that was uh, shown a while ago, especially for the mothers for this special day. And uh, speaking of mothers, uh, we would like to greet all the mothers of MCF a happy Mother's Day to all of you. Uh, we pray that God will continue to bless you. And lastly, we would like to uh, thank Pastor Roy for uh, giving us a very inspiring word for today, uh, especially uh, with regards to the importance of how we can honor our mother. So now, church, let us proceed with our uh, closing prayer and benediction. Our Heavenly Father God, Lord, once again, we would like to thank you for giving us the chance and the opportunity to uh, proceed with our uh, Sunday online worship service, even through uh, this way, Lord God, of uh, video recording. We pray, Lord God, for those people who are listening and watching this video. We pray, Lord God, that you will talk to them and uh, in a very uh, personal way. We thank you, Lord God, for your love and for your fellowship, and we entrust to you, Lord God, uh, all of us, Lord, uh, even uh, for uh, uh, for the things that we are facing on our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, we pray for those frontliner who is um, helping us, Lord God, uh, to to fight and battle this uh, pandemic that is happening around us. And Lord, uh, once again, uh, we commit to you our lives. We commit to you, Lord God, uh, the weeks ahead. And uh, Lord, uh, again, we love you and we thank you. In our church, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his presence with, his, with glory, with exceeding joy, to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Keep safe, everyone.